मानुष संवाद में आपका स्वागत है वेलकम टू द ट्वेंटी अक्टूबर 2022 एडिशन ऑफ मानुषी संवाद तो व्यूअर्स आज हम बात करने जा रहे हैं ऋषि सुनक और एलन मस्क की आप देख रहे हैं कि जब से ऋषि सुनक प्रधानमंत्री बने हैं इंग्लैंड के तो बहुत से इंडियंस को विशेषकर हिंदुओं को ये एक नशा और खुमारी आ गई है कि जैसे अब तो बस जी हिंदू राज इंग्लैंड में इस्टेब्लिश होने वाला है और बहुत से ऐसा भी सोचते हैं जो हिंदू राज की इतनी बात नहीं सोच रहे परंतु वो 200 साल हमारे पे राज करके गए अब देखिए हमारा टाइम आ गया है उनके ऊपर अंग्रेजों के ऊपर राज करने की ये बचकानी बातें इतनी तेजी से चलती हैं और सारा मीडिया स्पेस ऑक्यूपाई कर लेती हैं सोशल मीडिया पे भी आप देख रहे हैं दूसरा एलन मस्क आए और क्योंकि आते ही उन्होंने वहां के कुछ बहुत ही नॉक्शस लेफ्ट जिनको कहेंगे जहरीले किस्म के लेफ्ट वोक्स को फायर कर दिया और बड़े बेआब्रू हो के उनको निकाला सिक्योरिटी गार्ड्स ने उनको कहा निकले अब तो और विशेषकर वो गड्ढे महिला विजया गड्ढे वो महिला को निकाला और क्योंकि उसका बहुत बहुत ही जहरीला रोल रहा था ट्विटर में इस जालिम महिला ने है तो हिंदुस्तान मूल की परंतु देखिए प्रेसिडेंट ट्रंप को ट्विटर से उड़ा दिया इतनी हिमाकत तो जाहिर है कि इसने अपने को अपने प्रोफेशनल एथिक्स के साथ कॉम्प्रोमाइज करके ये बिकाऊ काम है ये तो काम कोई बिकाऊ व्यक्ति ही कर सकता है किसी देश के ड्यूली इलेक्टेड प्रेसिडेंट को उड़ा दिया जाए क्यों क्योंकि उसकी पॉलिटिक्स आपको पसंद नहीं आती पसंद है या नहीं कोई लीडर ये ट्विटर का काम नहीं है ट्विटर इज नॉट जज एंड प्रोसिक्यूटर रोल्ड इन टू वन इट्स 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 सपोज टू बी अ पब्लिक प्लेटफॉर्म फॉर फ्री एक्सप्रेशन ऑफ ओपिनियन और जिस तरह की ये सेंसरशिप करते हैं जिस तरह इन्होंने लोगों को और खासकर हिंदू मान्यताओं से जुड़े लोगों को जिस तरह उड़ाया है बार बार ये तो पाप इनको माफ नहीं होना चाहिए था तो जाहिर है मुझ में भी एक खुशी की लहर दौड़ी कि चलो कम से कम ये राक्षस ये दुष्ट लोग तो गए परंतु क्या एलन मस्क हिंदुस्तान के लिए या हिंदू समर्पित वॉइसेस के लिए उनकी आवाजों के लिए कोई बहुत बड़ी नियामत लेके आने वाले हैं इन्हीं सब बातों पर चर्चा करने के लिए हमारे साथ जुड़ रहे हैं प्रोफेसर गौतम सेन लंदन से और काफी करीब से देख रहे हैं ऋषि सोनक पे जो बहुत ज्यादा हुक्ला मचा हुआ है खासकर इंडियन ओरिजिन के लोगों के और दूसरी तरफ हाँ गौतम दा पाकिस्तानी इनको क्लेम कर रहे हैं तो जी पाकिस्तान के हैं ये साउथ एशियन गुजरा वाला से थे तो हमारे हैं और इस पे भी बहुत वो भी ढोल पीट रहे हैं तो ये जो सारा हुपला है ऋषि सुना के आसपास पहले इसी की खोज खबर लेते हैं वॉट इज ही एक्चुअली गोइंग टू टर्न आउट टू बी एंड फॉर मी द क्राइटेरिया इज वेरी सिंपल वॉट इज इन इन इट फॉर इंडिया एंड फॉर हिंदूज मुझे कोई चिंता नहीं है कि वो ब्रिटिश इकोनॉमी का क्या करेगा नहीं करेगा मुझे सबसे हमेशा अब तो बहुत नैरो फोकस हो गया है मेरी जिंदगी का कि हिंदुस्तान के लिए अच्छा होगा कि नहीं अच्छा होगा और विशेषकर हिंदुओं के लिए अच्छा होगा कि हमारे लिए ये भी एक नए किस्म का दुश्मनी सिद्ध होगा तो बताइए गौतम दा पहले ऋषि सोनक की बात फिर अपॉलोजी मैं अंग्रेजी में बोलने वाला हूँ तो कभी कभी दो दो चार बात हिंदी भी बोलने के लिए कोशिश करूंगा तो पहली बात यह है आप तो पाकिस्तान के बारे में बहुत इंटरेस्टिंग एक बात कहा इट इज वर्थ एक्चुअली इलेबोरेटिंग लिटिल बिट फर्दर पाकिस्तानीज आर एक्चुअली सेइंग वी आर नॉट इंटरेस्टेड लाइक यू हिंदूज इन अ सिम्बोलिक टेक ओवर ऑफ द ऑफिस 
England for us is like India. We will proceed city by city. And when we occupy, it will not be symbolic. It will be an Islamic country. Absolutely. Spot on. So they are not particularly impressed by this. They are saying that there is no thing. We will take the whole country to the whole country. And that is what we are doing to India. We are capturing state by state. Here in England, we have got about 30, 40 mayors. Scotland, the Scottish National Party is the most Islamist of all the national parties. Well, regional stroke is la national. So they are saying we are patient, unlike you, always in a hurry and end up in the mud. So we're not <laughs> in a hurry, Gautam Dai. We <laughs> just make monkeys of ourselves because our sense of our will to power is missing. Hindus don't have the will to power. And therefore, even a crumb that falls our way. We think we got some big boon, and it's not anywhere near a big boon. Gee. Well, well what, what is correct, as you say, is that you know, we are interested as individuals in getting ahead, as Mr. Rishi Sunak has, but not as a civilization community, as a political group. We are all interested in our individual fate. Now, nevertheless, in all fairness, I should at the very beginning record the fact that given that Hindus in India are demonized rently in the Anglosphere and also to some extent in Europe, really without let, and I, I see it day in, day out, so I really get an overdose, his presence in Downing Street rather confuses matters a little. But here is a Hindu who at least in public professes his Hindu identity, he's seen in cow worship, he's wearing his heart, maybe wo lagate hai, or he says Hindu. So this actually is an interesting development because for the first time they have to confront the fact that ye kiya. So ordinary people just accept what the establishment and the media and the academics say. So for them, this will be an interesting counterpoint. So this is something. Uh, I would say even positive that, you know, it sows some confusion in the enemy camp. However, the truth of the matter has been outlined very nastily in an article I've shared with you at The Guardian, I think, yesterday. Oh, I, won't yeah. name the author. I won't name the author because it makes me, as I said, I I'm saying he's very in name, but he actually so. said one or two things which are correct. Oh. Some things he said were actually correct. I regret to have to admit that. And that is, you know, he is part of, that is, Sunak is part of a wealthy network global elite whose sole purpose is personal social assimilation with the elites of the West, and in his case and most others, uh, Britain and America. They want to be socially assimilated. Their interest in India is zero, and by the time their grandchildren are born, it will be even less. And already we are seeing that the Indians who make it are the most hostile to Indian interest, the most ultra right wing, the previous Home Secretary was. And now we have another one who, to her great uh, credit, makes no bones about it. She is absolutely brutally honest that you people should have been grateful for everything we did to you. 80 million famine deaths, including because we gave you the railways, which is actually a completely uh, mistaken belief. They did not give us the railways. They charged enormously for it. They actually plundered us while the rail was being built, and tens of thousands of Indians died building it. So let that pass. Uh, she is a little bit uh, nutty, I have to say, if I want to be kind. Now, these people have no interest in India. I fear there is a further downside because he is now in a position to use his Indian identity to advance British interests, which would have been more difficult for a hoity-toity upper-class Englishman. And already you can see from the phone calls he has made very quickly to Narendra Modi and our external affairs minister that he is actually pulling out all the stops to use his particular identity. But let us not forget the family he comes from in India, that is his in-laws, and all the other IT companies are active 
in funding anti-national portals, <clears throat> almost all of them. If you just look at the list of people who fund the wire, etc., you will see where their money comes from. These families also fund outrageously anti-Hindu academics in the United States. And I'm thinking in particular of his in-laws, the gentleman from Columbia University who's in charge of publishing this entire series. And he has written very brutally about Hindu. He's very, very famous, this man. I'm sorry, his name just escapes me. He's the one of the most famous, most famous Indologists in the United States. He's professor in Columbia. His name just escapes me. So, koi baat hai. I think you know who I mean. And Rajiv Malhotra has spoken extensively about this particular case. Now, we are very good at this. All our Indian industries are funding anti-Hindus in Harvard, in Columbia, in Oxford. So, this is all par for the course, routine. So the fact that an Indian is in the uh, attend Downing Street means nothing. In fact, it may even be negative because he will use his uh, status as an Indian. But I have a feeling that though there is a lot of public comment in the Indian media approvingly, I don't think everybody in India is buying it. I'm looking at all the social media comment and there are enough people who are skeptical. I think we have woken up somewhat about the way the world really works. Now, if he was our friend, what would I ask him to do? Which he, as a prime minister, could influence. He could not transform overnight, but he could influence. Will he do anything about the fact that the British media, which is basically an arm of the state, they can talk all they like about the freedom of the press, but basically it's an arm of the state. The editors all went to public schools with the politicians. They went to Oxford or Cambridge together. They go to the same drinking clubs. They socialize. And they are the ones who dictate their anti-Hindu hatred, including the Financial Times, which I wrote about describing Narendra Modi as a classical fascist. As a classical fascist. How outrageous can you get? So will you do anything about that? Will you have a word in there? Now, maybe he doesn't get invited to these clubs yet. Will you have a word in there? Same about the academics. In all the universities which have India departments, they are the weakest link in Oxford, in Nottingham, in LSC, in SOAS, Cambridge. All of them have the knives out for India day in and day out. So will he make a phone call to the president of Trinity College or the master of whichever college and say, hey, old chap, this is not on. I doubt very much will he, he will do that. So this is the essence of the British orientation towards us is bitter hatred of the Hindus. Now, will he then do something else? Will he make a ringing public declaration of condemnation about the two countries which are attacking India at the moment, Pakistan and China? Now, on the, in the case of China, the Chinese Consul General, I think it was in Manchester, dragged a British Chinese protester into the embassy compound and personally with his associates beat him up. The police had to go and rescue him. Now this is an offense for which you should be declared persona non grata. This would happen to anybody from Africa, Asia, or even India. They would be expelled. The British made some kind of feeble noise that this is not on. Very typically nonsensical sentiment. The Chinese have just replied and not a peep from the British side, they have said, don't get above yourself. That's what they've said. Don't get above yourself. Remember how dependent you are on trade with China. Oh, I dream of the day when I'll hear the Indian side utter similar sentiments. So that is it. So we will get no joy from him where these critical issues are concerned for India. He will not utter a word of condemnation with China, about China, not Pakistan. Now, with the Pakistanis, they will be immediate demonstrations outside 10 Downing Street. They will throw brick bats, so he won't dare. Let me see if he intervenes when there's a demonstration against the Indian High Commission in Aldrich in London next time, because they come and throw brick bats, they terrorize people visiting, which they've done on India's Independence Day and Republic Day. And on the third occasion, they were planning another demonstration of the Pakistanis and Khalistanis. The Indian government expressed very strong opposition and told the British that, remember, your security in Delhi is dependent on us. So the Home Secretary meekly diverted the demonstration. He is not allowed to stop it. 
but she has the right to divert it. So she diverted it to Trafalgar Square, which is not very far. So this is how it is. I don't see any of this changing. Now, no. Let me let me let me a couple of questions. Huh? Number one question: When, for example, Hindus were attacked in Leicester, in in such a situation, is he going to take a nasty stand, blame Hindus, or is he capable of taking an honest stand against at least unprovoked attacks by Islamists? Number one. Number two. Why did he choose this nasty woman as his home secretary? Why? What could be the reason he knows that she is hideously partisan and brazenly anti-Hindu? Why did he do that? Let me what answer is... the second question first. The reason why he chose her is that just before Boris Johnson, his credible rival, withdrew, because had he not withdrawn, he actually would have uh, won the contest because if he had succeeded in getting the 100 parliamentary votes, then the membership would have elected him. All the surveys show that. And I'm, I'm quite confident he would have been elected. So just before Boris Johnson withdrew, he made a phone call to Suella Braverman, who was a supporter of Boris Johnson and who is now some kind of standard bearer of the British conservative right, asking for her support in order to neutralize Boris Johnson. And she duly obliged within a day or so that she switched her support to Rishi Sunak. So this relationship is entirely cynical and opportunist that he needed no, he her. No, he could have given her some other office. Does he have to give her home? He home, home, is the, home is the third most important office in the cabinet. And I think she may have bargained hard to be given back the Home Ministry. Now, um, Suella Braverman's appointment is of particular significance in the context of the riots in Leicester and Birmingham because she's already come out publicly to blame the new immigrants from India, that is from uh, Dia Dumun, uh, Dia and Dumun. Daman, sorry, beg your pardon. Dio, he has, Dio, 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 Dio Daman. Dio Daman. Dio Daman. He has, she has publicly blamed them. And now you can see it is all a fix, all of a piece. The mayor of Leicester, who has also blamed the Hindus and has been seen with one of the leaders of the demonstration from the Muslim side, has appointed an academic who is a known expert on Islamophobia and extremely, extremely sympathetic to the Islamic cause. Now he has been appointed to head the inquiry into the riots. So the conclusion of that inquiry is foregone. We know what he's going to say. Now, um, the way to stop this would have been for the Hindu groups to make an immediate protest to the Home Secretary, that is Suela Bravan and the, and the Prime Minister. They have done no such thing. Very foolishly written to the Mayor of Leicester, who is actually a nobody. Now, the most shocking of all of this, I will now say in public, was an article published in a portal of Prime Minister Narendra Modi's most important voice abroad, also blaming the people of Diu Daman. What? Yes. Say I it again. Say it again. The article was published in the portal owned by Modi's voice abroad, an article which also blamed the Diu Daman immigrants to Leicester for being the ultimate cause of the tensions which led to the riots. And that is how it all began. The article also says that we East Africans from Uganda and the Muslims always got on extremely well in Uganda, as well as Leicester, implying it is these people of recent origin from India who were the instigators, that is the people who created the conditions for the riots. I will send you the article and you might wish to put it on your Manushi website. It was shocking. The article says a few other things which are unexceptional, like uh, it has nothing to do with Hindutva. Now, this gentleman also is a person who is the most powerful Hindu leader in the United Kingdom because everyone defers to him. 
and he, I'm afraid, is Prime Minister Narendra Modi's voice, and the portal belongs to his company. So there we are. Naam kya hai? Okay. Well, I've already shared the name with you in the past. No, 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 no. Come on. The you portal is owned by uh, Mr. Manoj Ladwa. Mr. Ladwa. The article was published in that portal. So many of us were very shocked to see that because uh, it is factually incorrect for a start. There have also been new Muslim migrants to Leicester. So why are they not as a new entrance into the city also to blame? Now, the one thing which can be said against them, against our new Daman migrants, is that they were not cowed. They did not run away. When they were pushed and bullied and their homes attacked before their peace march, which was the immediate cause of the riots, they went on a peace march, which was policed. So the police knew there was a march going on. It was not as if it happened unannounced. The only thing which was surprising about the march that the numbers were larger than was anticipated. So these people stood up and fought back. This is not what the people from East Africa are, are inclined to do. They are far too busy with their lives and making money. So this is the issue. So I have to say the new inquiry which has been inaugurated is a fix which will blame them and paint the violent Muslims as the victim. I can't hear you. I said there's CCTV footage all over. And you have to show some injury in order to say that Hindus attack. You have to have some damage done to somebody to say that the Hindus were on the war path. And the other side, the footage is clear. The peace march is clear. They were harming nobody, just Jai Shri Ram or whatever slogans. How can they come to an adverse conclusion with CCTV footage to back the claims of innocence by Hindus. That Islamists can do it, I can understand. They're used to al taqiya the art of deceit. But have the British been Islamized so thoroughly that they will lie like this? Well, you know, um, this morning I read in one of the newspapers, uh, I think it may have been The Guardian, I I'm not sure, which says, Jai Shri Ram, is a slogan of Hindu militants who attack minorities. Uh, that is how it is described. All the evidence oh, and all the Hindus is not attacking. Please bring Hindus who know how to attack. I now, wish that it existed. Uh, if they did, they wouldn't <laughs> be so humiliated and insulted. I pray and wish. But you know, the Hindu organizations who are leading the argument are all owned by the government. Every single one is part of the third. They all are in cahoots with the Home Office and the police. They report back. So these Hindu organizations are totally compromised. Now, my recommendation to them was, in the inquiry, first of all, go prepared and have a Queen's Council to represent you, which I would have supplied to my contacts. That is a senior lawyer of the caliber of Harsh Harish. Salvin, to represent you. And the first question I would have posed is when you say Hindutva was responsible, please explain to us what you understand by Hindutva. Give us an itemized list. And secondly, I would have asked, how did these things contribute to the violence? Please explain to me on the itemized list, the connection between Hindutva and the violence in the streets. They would not have been able to understand, answer no, because I'm none right. of them know what a Hindutva is. Gautamda, that said, second stage, third stage, those are uh, sort of academic arguments about what's Hindutva. No. I'm saying watch the footage. What have the Hindus done and what have the Muslims done? No, the footage I'm, is going to be purported as perhaps excessive reaction to provocation. They're going to say all oh, this was provoked. No, no, but you have to show provocation. What did Hindus do? If you're now, saying... That can, be, that, can be, that can be demonstrated in a simple way how many people were arrested and exactly what were they charged with. Now, a number of Hindus I know have been charged with possession, which means carrying an offensive weapon. Bodily violence has mainly been attributed to the Muslims. Some Hindus have been told you're carrying a knife, and that's an offense to carry it in public, in this particular circumstance especially. But they have not on the whole been charged 
but they are being charged, particularly somebody I know with incitement, which is a catch-all accusation. Now, all of this will be orchestrated. You have to prove it from the footage. CCTV footage of every bit of that demonstration and whatever happened, the fracas is available. But you know, the Hindus have made a deal. The Hindu leaders have made a deal. We will blame the newcomers and we, the good people who were before in Leicester, are going to be left out. We will not be condemned. We are going to blame the people. This is now a done deal. So suicidal. Only way to, only way to brave, physically brave Hindus. And if you cut yourself off from the physically brave Hindus who won't be cowed down, next when they come for you, neither the police will stand by you, nor the British public, nor anybody else. But you know, they, they, they are, are uh, saying that this uh, Hindutva emboldened and encouraged them to act in this militant way. But there's a study by the Henry Jackson Society. Uh, some woman has written an article saying that she was there on the ground investigating and she found no evidence whatsoever of any ideological influence over these recent origin Indians, which emanated from India. There is no evidence that they were ideologically motivated. But what had happened before they went to the peace march that is their homes were attacked and their women were being harassed. And mm. they reacted and then the bigger violent problem arose. All of this, I'm afraid, the inquiry will brush under the carpet and the Hindu leaders are themselves going to be complicit in allowing this to happen. There is only one thing which can be done. That is for South Block to instruct the High Commissioner to have a private conversation with the Foreign Secretary saying that we will not accept this nonsense because the High Commission has already protested. So they will also be made to look like fools. So they should privately oh. tell the Foreign Office that we will not accept a whitewash. But unfortunately, the new Foreign Minister is also hostile to India. This man has never been a friend of India. Mr. Dominic Rabb is not a friend of India. He has been very critical. So Mr. Sunak's cabinet is now got two people in the key positions which do not suit India. What is Sula Brennan's uh, angst against India and Hindus? What has she got against us? Just because she's Christian? Brahman. Oh. Brahman is rumored she's a Buddhist. Oh. It is rumored she's a Buddhist. Brahman, Kuala, yeah, these are not Buddhist names. No, her husband is a white Englishman. Ravaman, that's where the surname comes from. And she herself, Ambedkar. I'm told she's a Buddhist. I'm oh, you mean Ambedkar? Sorry? Ambedkar. No, Buddhist. The Lai Lama is not hostile to Hindus. How can a Buddhist be hostile to Hindu civilization? I mean, it's nonsense. So, anyway, but, let's but, get but on. But, with... no, but uh, Badu, let me make a quick comment on that. Any yeah. Buddhist which has come near the British establishment, has been turned into anti-Hindu. You will see some eloquent articles on this by Conrad Elst, that Buddhism was perverted by the British establishment. And any Buddhist, for example, the ones who work in Soas for Tibet, they're all run by the intelligence services. So any Buddhist who comes to this country becomes anti-Hindu. Now, Dalai Lama and his people are very different. He's a wise, honorable man. So they are not part of this. But the Buddhist community is very divided. Now, what is it that is of bigger importance to India, the much larger no, no. Sunak stand on these issues. Has he uttered a word? What kind of word? I think he will say nothing. He has said nothing and he will say nothing. I will be very surprised if he engages with this issue because he will then be portrayed as being a Hindu who is partisan for mm -hmm. his own community. So he will say nothing. Yeah. If anything, he'll be harder on Hindus to demonstrate that he is neutral. So in a way, he is, he is in Answer a situational one. bind. He will not be able to do anything because they will immediately point a finger at him. The Muslims will be out for his blood. So he will say nothing. And that part I understand. But he could privately issue instruct, instructions on fair play and justice. But I fear this is not going to happen. Okay. Let, me, okay. let me enlarge this picture a little bit, Mother. We need to understand the big picture. Now, okay. the Americans 
for whom the British are merely an instrument now. So this Anglosphere, the Anglosphere, the British are a very junior partner, has understood the errors it made with China out of hubris and racist arrogance that we can control them. Now, it all went out of control and the Chinese are now snapping at the heels big time. The Chinese have made such technological advances, they are going to be very difficult to stop. So they are not about to make the same mistake with a lot of the material that I'm familiar with in, from the US government says, we will not allow any country to acquire an industrial base that will threaten American power. That is Anglosphere power. And that is why they want India to fail in Atmanirvar, because Atmanirvar in India means establishing a manufacturing base. They don't want this to happen. They want India to be a service economy. And how they see India is like this. They say the Arabs have oil and we control them. You Indians have skilled labor and we control that. All your skilled labor is with us. Yeah. So you are just a natural resource. And Escott Reed, the Canadian High Commissioner in the 1950s, who happened to be a great friend of Jagdish Bhagwati, the economist, said that the CIA in Delhi told him, if we want to fight any major war, we need Indians. That's since Escort reads memoirs, still available in print. Now, they want the British and the Americans do not wish India to succeed. And in a way, this is why they're finding Modi's nationalist policies a bit alarming. What they want in India is not direct control. They are too smart to think they directly control India. They want direct control of individual state governments like Tamil Nadu, which basically answers to the church in the United States. West Bengal, which answers to Pakistan and therefore the United States and China. They want some control, but most of all, what they want is India may or may not become a more significant economic power, but what they want is a weak government in Delhi. They want weak coalitions, which will comply with US injunctions, which means what the British has said. As well. Hence, and, uh, the preferred choice. And I want Mr. Sunak to say something else. The British ambassador to Kathmandu publicly stated, and then he was withdrawn, so what? We are converting Nepalese to Christianity. Will you repudiate? He actually publicly said that. Who? The British ambassador to Nepal. So now will Rishi Sunak say, I am a Hindu, I don't approve. Our evangelists will not be allowed with official approval to try and convert Indians, Nepalese, Hindus in general. Will he say that? Now, I'm afraid many of the Hindus I meet are not really Hindu. Just by participating in ritual, you're not a Hindu. In this historical juncture, to be a Hindu is to gather up your strength for defending your community. It's a time for the Kshatriyas to fight, not for smart intellectuals to go to Columbia and Harvard and mouth nonsense about the civilization as patriarchal and racist and casteist. So ritual to me means nothing. And these two big organizations here, ISKCON and Swaminarayan, I'm afraid they are deeply, deeply associated with the Western establishment. So I don't find it impressive that Rishi Shunak went to ISKCON and worshiped a cow. They did nothing when we pleaded for help before the caste legislation was being considered. We said caste legislation will demonize us in the eyes of the world. It will be used against the Indian government in every international forum because they have equality laws. Because what the evangelists want is reservations being extended to Christian converts. That is their sole aim in India. They feel this is the big fly in the ointment. Because you lose your reservation status, actually you don't. But at least in law, you're not supposed to gain these privileges. This is what they want. And they will use the caste legislation in the United Kingdom, which will then spread to every other country which looks to the British for legislation, Australia, Canada, New Zealand, Malta. And they will harass India at the GATT, the WTO forum, the UN forums to say, where is the quality of reservations for Christians? Now, we fought this. ISKCON refused to help us. Swami Narayan refused to help us. So I do not consider these people Hindus at all. In fact, I regard them as business, business networking. These are business networking organizations. And ISKCON has a president and a managing director. Excuse me. I do not read about managing directors and presidents of any Hindu organization in the last 2,000 years. See? It's an absurdity. 
So I'm afraid Srila Prabhupada, great man that he was, would not prevent his organization being hijacked, not everywhere. I would not say the same about the people in Bangalore, but abroad, they have only a fleeting association. They are very autonomous, and I'm afraid they are not Hindus, in my opinion. This is simply a claim many people make, particularly Swami Narayan. And I advise anybody who wants to know, look at the ghastly paper of the Economic and Political Weekly. There's a little article which summarizes the founding document of Swami Narayan by their founder. Please read that. That document was written by an accountant. Basically, it was basically advice on accounting. This is their founding document. Say it again. The founding document of Swami Narayan is basically about how to manage your finances. So I say it was written by an accountant. So they were founded by an accountant. There's a long article in DPW which details this. Uh, okay. In, now, so where does Sunak, Sunak's grandparents had founded a temple in England? He's supposedly on the board of it. Has that temple been actually existing as a place for Hindu bonding? What kind of a temple did they establish and what is his relationship to the temple? Madhuji, I have to confess, I was unaware of this. Despite keeping track, I was not aware of this. I'm afraid this is a positive for him personally because anybody who establishes a temple and a friend of mine has done the same near Reading for the Nepali community. And this actually is a good sign. I hope this is a positive sign about Rishi Sunak's commitment, uh, though it was his parents. So we have to wait and see. But I think, you know, he is very constrained in what he can do. And all okay. the concrete issues would be difficult for him. Okay. Now, I'm sure you know more than I do about this globalist agenda and the globalist group that is an offshoot of the World Economic Forum. And the globalists, apparently, this elite club that also wants to reduce the world population to about 10%, I believe, they've got all kinds of elitist ideas about who needs to live and who deserves to be on reservations as just labor and the rest need to just vanish from the surface of this earth. I believe that they, they decided among themselves that the heads of state are going to be all from either Ivy League, Harvard, Oxford type of institutions and they are pushing for such people who are within their influence uh, domain of influence and the agenda that they have the globalists have for the world does he belong to any of that you know uh, the, 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 this is basically a washington sponsored view of the world that's where it really comes from ultimately yeah. And surely, yes, Rishi Sunak will be an honorary member of this, as will be our Chief Justice. So yes, there are plenty of people of this background who can be mobilized to serve the purposes. As for population decline, that this is quite interesting and quite amusing. The countries which are experiencing the most significant and irreversible population growth are Italy, Japan, and Russia. So this will happen first in Europe, not in India or China, too, may have turned the corner. Chinese population may also decline um, because now the ratio, the demographic ratio of the people of childbearing age to the old is adverse in China, terrible in Japan, terrible in Italy, terrible in Russia. Russia actually reached the point of oh, no return. In India, educated women are averse to having children. And one or two, I mean, two seems to them a bit too much. That's become the norm. So we are going through a serious decline curve now. We're not increasing, except Muslim population in India. Well, this actually will serve the purpose of the people who wish to control our country. Yeah. They want our, our most capable, most educated to simply evaporate. And you see, within 30 years, this becomes unstoppable. Because if you had only one child, and they've had one child, the arithmetic of the demography is very, very clear. Now, yes, what you say is absolutely correct. But you know, it's interesting that amongst my contemporaries, 
educated women, um, American and European, not a single one has had a child, not a single one. I was thinking the other day about 12 people who are my near contemporaries who are now in their 60s, not one has had a child and all of them are intellectually very gifted. Many of my Indian friends barely have one child. Yeah. And in fact, some have none, some have no children. Yeah. And, uh, this is something which is assisted by the state, by taxation policies, reservation policies. This is being promoted by the state. So they want a cohort in our kind of country, which is much more malleable, much easier to influence, and Christianity will always be there to guide them. Okay, now, Musk, what's with Elon Musk? What's his politics? And is he good news or bad news for us, not just Indians, but Hindu Indians? Well, you know, like you and like everybody else, I did experience an initial surge of excitement and joy at what he did, which is to kick out these two people who were sworn enemies of Hindus. Mm. So that made me feel very happy. But mm. on greater reflection, it seems to me we should be uh, circumspect. Uh, Musk has the money to indulge in these kinds of uh, fancies that I will own the biggest platform in the world. So for him, it is not as big a deal as it is for you and me observing it happen. For him, it's just money and, of course, his business. Musk is ultimately motivated by irritation. This man is very irritable, and that irritation can become action, which is he's annoyed with these people, these two Indians, for overdoing it about the American right. They were really overdoing it, banning Donald Trump, censoring lots of people, as if, you know, they were uh, unstoppable and, you know, so he was angry with that. So this, I think, is his real motivation to reset the debate. Now, if somebody in a word now to tell me he's been having conversation with Donald Trump and the Republicans, I would not be shocked. But they wanted to cauterize this boil. So this is mainly to do with the United States. Nevertheless, these two individuals, Mr. Agarwal and Gade, were extremely committed to this anti-Hindu campaign. And I think... Whoever comes, particularly a white American, will be less hostile. So inadvertently, we will have some gain. Because, you know, that uh, mm -hmm. handle, which is always meticulously polite by the historian, that has also been killed. The historian who was regularly pointing out flaws. I forget, uh, yes. And I have never seen him utter uh, uh, an abusive word. They killed him because, you know, he was a problem. He's with gone others back. Like you, with, Again. With others like you and others who have a big following, they play all sorts of tricks with the algorithm. Your followers will not grow. They will disappear. You won't have a blue tick. So they will undermine you so that people don't get to hear what you have to say. And the purpose is very clear. This is not rocket science. The church has been doing this since the time of St. Augustine. They want to seize control over the narrative. And the way you seize control is more nuanced and more sophisticated. You have a platform which pretends to be open to everybody, but you actually guide this platform in ways which will influence elite opinion. And that's what they were doing. And all these platforms, all of them, are indeed commercial, but they're also a means of gathering data for intelligence. A lot of time is spent analyzing opinion, the movement in people's mood, and how you could influence them. The same is true of all the other internet organizations who keep track of what we say and what we think. This is very valuable information. This is, of course, very important for marketing products. That's why it is collected. But it has many other uses. So this information is an aspect of warfare. Let me repeat, all of this have, uh, in, have an influence on warfare. And what India is going through is a form of warfare to influence the outcome of the information warfare by seizing control of its narrative. Thank God, the government of India seems to have woken up suddenly that some action needs to be taken. Both the elements of the government's now stated policy <coughs> are absolutely correct. The first is that you will not be allowed with the excuse of freedom of speech to undermine India's constitution, its integrity, its sovereignty, its good relations with friendly countries. 
we will not let you do that. And we should say we give two hoots about freedom of speech when these are concerned. Life is not about freedom of speech, it is about survival. Survival, physical and cultural. And these things will be good. The other thing which I'm delighted and I'm amused to see they've also done, that somebody sitting out there far away in Washington with some animus towards you and me will not be able to cancel us because that's what it amounts to, cancel you if you don't like what you're saying. Cancel you for even the most innocuous things. Yeah. yeah. This will now be dictated by Indian regulators. This is now, if not 100% U-turn, very 180%, it's a big change. Oh. Will it be implemented? Will it be implemented? That is the only which remains. The third thing, which I'm not sure has been done, is to insist that data is stored in India, that it will not be stored outside India. I do not believe this has happened. This is subject to a much larger negotiation with the United States on a whole range of subjects, but we should insist this data on India will be stored in India. No, but my point really is this. Um, what is Musk's core politics? Which orientation is he likely to tilt towards? I mean, for example, he's supporting Ukraine versus Russia in a very militant manner and putting his money where his mouth is. So it's clearly that he's with NATO, he's with uh, the warring, warmongers of America. He's done a U-turn, Madhuji. He's done a U-turn. When? On Ukraine. He's done a U-turn, a very amusing U-turn. What he has said, he hmm. proposed a UN-monitored referendum in the areas which Russia claims to be, um, should be part of their territory. The Russians have agreed to this proposal. <laughs> They have okay. said, yes, we will accept. Now, this actually is a very good solution, but of course, it absolutely does not suit US foreign policy. What I will say about Elon Musk is this. He is, I think, the world's richest man ahead of Gautam Adani. He's the richest man in the world. I think he has less debt. He doesn't need to be politically loyal to anyone. He doesn't need party political approval for what he does. He's very intelligent. He is a little bit eccentric. So he does his own thing. Only people he will not be able to afford to annoy, and that is not good for India. He will not be able to afford to annoy the Chinese. That's a very important market for his commercial activities. Yes, okay. We can deal with one enemy, but will he be also hostage to Islamists? We really have to wait and see, but I don't see any signs of him doing what this couple were doing, these two people, because basically it was an Islamist agenda they were pursuing. Yeah. By shutting out voices, YouTube as well. Yeah. We had made a YouTube, we, we had made a video, a very important video on the terrorist attacks against Narendra Modi and Amit Shah in Gujarat. The, um, what's it, the lady who was trying to organize assassination, I forget the name. Uh, yeah, Ishar Jahan. The Ishar Jahan case, it, it was taken down. And in that video, we had interviewed uh, Ajit Doval and uh, others. And that was taken down. So this is a very active attempt to distort the truth and make sure that a certain narrative will prevail. And as I've been saying again and again, if you want to undermine India and Hindus, you need Islam on your side. Because they are the single largest group who can upset the apple cart potentially. So if you want to control India, you must have the Muslims on your side, which is what the Indian political parties have also concluded and did so long ago. Uh, okay. Is Musk interested in putting down India at the behest of Islamists? Not yet, you said. My bottom line on this, without any evidence so far, so... I could be wrong and that would be good, is that India is nothing to him. It's of no consequence to him. So if the State Department says, Rana Ayub is our person, he will comply. Okay. I get it. Now this Suela woman, see, uh, he, her I can understand. She's a Goan Christian. 
uh, she may claim to be Buddhist while in England, but her orig origin is in Goa, Christian family. Mother was possibly a Hindu who converted. Those are the facts out, at least in the social media. She's Tamil her. Goan, but Kenya. But what else? So I'm saying she's Christian, so her hatred for Hindus is understandable. But this Joker Agarwal, you know, I mean, he comes from a Banya Hindu family. What is his problem? But there what? is no shortage. There is no shortage of such people in India, Madhu. There's no shortage. All the people who curse India most are Brahmins. Many of them Bengali Brahmins and another significant number Tamil Brahmins, both of whom have been persecuted, particularly the Tamils, and expelled from their homeland. They are actually on the forefront of giving Gali to Hindus. All Especially of these people. Are Brahmins. Brahmins. Yeah, and they're all Brahmins. They're even calling for mass slaughter. The, the woman in Cambridge said that they have no rights to exist. She said they have no right to exist about Brahmins. She's a Brahmin. He's not, which one is a Brahmin who said this? Both of these two professors there, both professors now. We in fact, I try not to remember them. We reported her to the police. But the police are not about to proceed against a Cambridge Don. We, we said she was inciting uh, genocide. Yeah, I mean, basically, she said they have no rights, so basically, no right to exist. And she's a Brahmin from this? Of course, company. they're both Brahmins. Oxford? They're two Brahmin women professors in Cambridge. I oh, try one, not is, one is a Bengali, right? No. Yogendra Yadav's sister-in-law. One is that, right? She is an LSC. Huh? She's not a Bengali, but she... Oh, yeah, she's a Bengali. She's an LSC. Big yeah. She's an LSC. She's an LSC. She didn't say this, but uh, she has written nasty pieces about India and Modi and blah, blah, blah. But these two women are the most hostile. They are full professors. Yogendra Adam's sister-in-law is not yet a full professor. She is a Yosh associate. She is a Bengali. And her sister is a professor in JNU. Yeah. Uh, okay. So at least he is not outright hostile. Is he going to bring back uh, Trump? That seems highly likely because the grounds on which Trump was excluded mm. were on the face of it justified because he actually was over the top. But you know, you can't do that to a former president of a country. Especially former presidents have, things. They have a right to say outrageous things, you, which you Not and I may not have. Things that were being said about him were pretty outrageous, number one. Secondly, the Islamists, the Khalistanis, these missionary mafia, the kind of hideous things they say and are proud about it. There's no shame. There's no hesitation. Nobody takes any action against them. So if once in a while a Trump goes over the top, so be it. I, I, I agree. You see, Trump had grounds for being a bit irate. I may use the term irate, which is, first of all, the accusations of him being a Russian agent were found to be totally fabricated, yeah. completely yeah. false. They originated in England, by the way, with the former British secret agent. So that was one that was used against him during the elections that he worked for the Russians. In fact, the other camp was much more compromised with the Russians. Hillary Democrat were much more compromised. Secondly, thanks to an Indian diplomat from Delhi, I've been kept extremely well informed about the scale of the problem of rigging. He was accusing U.S. officials of. Now, mm -hmm. I thought that unlikely, but I'm afraid there's enough evidence to suggest yeah. that not, not everything was okay. So he had very serious grounds for being angry and maybe mm -hmm. somewhat unreasonable. Now, they wanted him out because he did not want to fight the war in Ukraine. That is very clear. He vetoed the, aid to, the military aid to Ukraine because he had read, agreed with Henry Kissinger, with whom his son-in-law was in regular contact, and other scholars, right-wing scholars, to say that do not fight with Russia, deal with China. But the military-industrial complex, which, which runs 
Biden, uh, Joe Biden, Joe Biden and his team wanted this war, and they've got a now. I'm hearing they are considering sending U.S. troops to fight against mm -hmm. Russia, U.S. and other allied countries' troops to fight with Russia. And it seems that the place they will most likely want to be is Odessa, which is basically an ethnic Russian city. Hmm. So uh, is it heading towards a nuclear war or better sense will prevail? Madhu, the thing about nuclear war, except for that first time when sold nuclear power dropped bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, we don't know how such a war will start. We really don't know. There is a lot of modeling, a huge amount of thinking about such wars, but I'm afraid there is a margin of error where we have to say we do not know. Since the consequences of such a war will be final, it will be like the extermination of the dinosaurs. It will be over for all of us. Good news. I like the idea. But you know, we should, be, we should be prudent. End of we should be prudent. And there is a huge tension between prudence and brinkmanship. And the United States is now engaging in much brinkmanship, which is stressing the limits of prudence. Now, I do not regard the Secretary of State or the NSA as being that smart. I do not think that they are geniuses. In fact, I have a very circumspect opinion about their intellectual skills. These people are playing with fire. They are playing with fire. And the innocent American public may be going along, though many are unhappy with Joe Biden, 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 whatever. This is a very dangerous situation. The Russians have said we have no intention of using nuclear weapons again and again. But they are saying, the Americans are saying, oh, the US, US is, Russians are about to use one in Ukraine. The Russians have no interest in doing that. They have already won. They just need a little bit more territory, which they're going to get by January. By January, they will take everything they want because their mobilization is complete. 300,000 to a million troops have been mobilized. What they didn't want to do was to engage in mass bombardment and killing of fellow Slavic Orthodox Christians. They wanted to avoid doing that. But now they find they have to fight a dirty war, which means heavy bombardment. That's what they've started doing. Gautamda, you know very well that it's not going to be easy to destroy demonic powers like America or Islam. It's not going to be easy. And I personally think the end of the human race is a very small price to pay for destroying these demonic powers. I'm willing to die if it means that I perish with the end of Islam. I only want my last moments to be such that I know that these demonic powers are finished. I'm very willing to let go. Well, and even as a Hindu, we know... I can, I can only comment on how this will happen. It hmm. does not require a direct nuclear strike against India or third parties. A big enough nuclear exchange between the two superpowers will cause a nuclear event. Yeah. That's, that's it. That is what will kill us all. I'm saying not a bad that's, idea. That's, that's, that's a danger. Now, I'm afraid you may choose uh, Madhu, but there will be a lot of people who will dissent from you that they also want to go. I, know. I mean, why are they creating nuclear weapons if they think they're so horrible? They are. And let them actually get a taste of their own weaponry. America should by now get uh, a few dropped on its soil. It is the Americans who have blocked every effort. Huh? It is the Americans who have blocked every effort at nuclear disarmament. Mm. You look carefully through the history of all the yeah. because it is they who have because they think that we will always be ahead technology and we will be able to engage okay. in nuclear blackmail against others and they won't be able to do it to us. Now this but is no chemical longer. weapons also chemical warfare yeah, is no absolutely. less. They were people. researching in. They were researching all over the Ukraine. Yeah. All the labs in Ukraine were owned by the United States. There you are. And that is so, being investigated and the truth will be revealed. Ukraine was doing whatever Uncle Sam told them because Ukraine was living hand to mouth from IMF loans. They were bankrupt. Tell me something, Gautam since you 
follow all the international uh, who's who, um, all these uh, Amartya Sen types who uh, are forever emoting over what India does, how we are turning forces, Hindu militants, Hindu extremism, Hindu this. Do they have a word of condemnation for the American policy? Does he ever open his mouth? Or Nashutosh Varshne? Or they know that the moment they did that, they're going to get a punch in the nose and they'll be bloodied. Uh, do they ever... Uh, write about American policy? You know, mother, there was one, one exception, one exception, one solitary exception of huh. this leftist speaking up about Israel. And he never opened his mouth again after what happened to him. None of these people ever Who? talk about any other Who atrocity. Was Who was that? I forget his name. He was an academic from New York. He said something which was uh, against Israel. And he was excoriated big time and he was in fear it's, of it's Israel too. needs sympathy I, I'm sorry, Israel needs sympathy but uh, yes, no, no, he was being hostile to Israel oh, so I, 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 I would also punch him for that no, no, he was, he, he, he was uh, saying something in favor of the Palestinian militants and that got him into a lot of trouble in the United States, particularly being in a city like New York now, you see the reason why I don't take these intellectuals, many of whom I know personally because they're Bengalis of my age group approximately, is because I recall they never condemned the atrocities in East Pakistan in 71 because the Chinese had said that it was okay. Nixon had said it was okay, that 400,000 women were in rape camps and 2 million people had been murdered. They never uttered a word. And I used to meet them in Calcutta after 73. They're apologists. So these people are of no consequence. You know, they will simply disappear because they have lived by telling lies to make their careers. Suela is exactly like that. You know, Suela has done what she's doing because being a black woman. She's hardly black. She's black. Well, being a non-white person, she decided this was a good agenda to embrace, to appeal to the ultra-right. She wanted to create a constituency for herself by being far right with the Tories. And she succeeded. This cynical ploy proved very fair. I don't think she has any particular loyalty, though in her case, okay, being an Indian time. Christian, she doesn't like Hindus. Being an Indian Christian, she doesn't yeah, like yeah. Hindus. Yeah, and, and we don't like in Christians either. So let's be very clear. Let, let her hate us because I think we reciprocate. At least now we've learned to reciprocate. We thought goody-goody. We were goody-goody. We thought of them as goody goody people. No, please hate us so that once we become aware of what you represent, we too will feel liberated enough to say, yes, we hate you and we want you out. But my last question for this evening, what happened? It just slipped my mind. I thought I was going to ask you something important that occurred to me and then it's gone. How come? Um, one second, what happened to my last question? Anyway, you want to um, uh, come up with your uh, concluding comments? Maybe I'll remember while you're talking. Well, you know, I am uh, not unduly concerned about, about what the British do, because what happens in London really is subject to instructions from Washington, except the British have some skills. Uh, America's daughter. The British know us better. Uh, the most important thing is, Madhu, the work that you and others do to make sure that Indians are much more politically aware and conscious of the dangerous world we live in. And our biggest drawback, the only reason why we are a target, is that we are a soft target. If we become much harder, more difficult, and I yeah. suspect that, and you will confirm, this is happening gradually. Indians yeah, yeah. are becoming a lot better aware of what the world is about. They are becoming a little bit more prosperous. And this self-assertion is what is being denounced abroad as Hindu fascism. That we have woken up from all our tra travails over a thousand years, oppression, murder, rape, enslavement. Bura Jagya. And I will repeat that despite what you occasionally say, the current dispensation has, given, has opened a door for us. Maybe not much more in your view, but it has opened a door for us. There is a um, 
much, much more to be ah, done. Oh, okay, okay. You, were, you were talking about uh, the censorship that YouTube um, imposes, that Twitter has imposed. The fact is, I'm told that the social media team, which is apparently 3,000 strong of Prime Minister Modi, they watch each one of social media activists very carefully. And whoever is inconvenient for BJP or is critical gets to face a crackdown. So we are not only dealing with uh, Gora Sahib's crackdown, the Islamist crackdown, but Hindu Hidai Samarat's crackdown. That's what is happening here, Gautamda, and you know it. You may not say it because of your fondness for <clears throat> the Prime Minister, but that's a fact. His social media team, you must have seen how they go after Subramaniam Swami. Now, whatever his weaknesses, whatever his flaws, he doesn't deserve that kind of badgering, humiliation, insult. And they actually gang up to do it. What for? Do they ever go after Sonia Gandhi like that? No. I mean, he has a track record that deserves some consideration. But they're like Bhediyas um, after him. Now, the point that I'm making is, so we are actually endangered from all sides. Uh, so are you in some ways, right? Um, you're just more cautious than I am. And I don't have that instinct. So well, I, I, have, I, I have some advantages like you. I'm, first of all, inconsequential to the powers that be, and I have no ambition. So that no, I have I'm zero ambition, and I'm also inconsequential. I, you know, I don't think I command a vote bank of any uh, kind at all, which is all that really matters to politicians. And to me, and, you see, I've observed these consequential people in West Bengal in their elections. I concluded I surely don't want to be part of that crew. Yeah, but to be able to say that means um, you're pointing fingers. And so I'm saying they are no less ruthless in curbing voices of dissent. Or even those that are well-meaning dissenters. You and I are not enemies of this dis dispensation. And if they are attacked from outside, both you and I will stand up to defend them. Uh, but there are things they do which are so harmful, and that's all we occasionally as well-wishers point to, but they can't tolerate even this. Although little... I was told by a very important person in Delhi that the Prime Minister can defend himself. He doesn't need people like you. So I should have shut up and stopped writing after that. So, so be it. And he loves people who hate him. So I am training myself to hate the Prime Minister because I know how much he loves people who hate him. So maybe uh, at least, um, you know, there's better chance of surviving that way, given that uh, he's very kind towards and charming towards people who forever calling him names, which you and I don't. Uh, so maybe yeah, I, I have I have never called him names. I have occasionally confessed to wanting something more. As I keep saying, what about our temples, etc.? What about our educational curriculum? But beyond that, you know, I have uh, I I think that uh, we are fortunate because you know we have an opportunity, and despite the pace, we are we are moving forward. And I think some of the benefits of all that has happened will be seen after I'm gone. So. Okay, but coming to my uh, final conclusion, I, as I said, uh, though World War, nuclear holocaust is not in my hands, but I think the, oh, by the way, scientists, then I'm going to, going to conclude with this. Scientists have said repeatedly that if the human race were to disappear from Mother Earth, then within 50 years, the Earth will rejuvenate. To me, this is great news. We messed it up so badly. So why should we insist on clinging on? And in any case, Gautamda, as Hindus, we know 
uh, if not on this planet, somewhere else, you know, we have so many births and rebirths to deal with. And so long as these demonic forces are destroyed, I think uh, it's a very small price to pay. For well, I, I have a parochial, parochial wish to be reborn in Benares again. Okay. <laughs> Which is where I was born the first time. Okay, okay. That's, that's very nice. Yeah, Kashi. People go there to die also. Yes. You want to be born there. I was born there once. I spent okay. a very happy childhood there. Okay. On its narrow alleys. It's not very great as a city. I haven't seen it for many years, but I will do that early next year. Okay, so end of Kalyog, you will be reborn there in Satyog, whatever comes there. <laughs> Thank you very much. We have much to look forward to. And that's the adva great advantage of being Hindu. So let's watch carefully, viewers, how Rishi Sunak and Elon Musk play out. And let's not get too excited too soon. Absolutely. Or not get too, too cynical too soon. I think also that Mishra type of cynicism that we saw in The Guardian is also uncalled for. Because all that he criticized, he himself represents in full measure. So let's not be too cynical, nor be too naive and excitable. And in the meantime, please do like, subscribe and share and keep supporting this baby channel um, in whatever way you can. Shubratri, Namaste. Namaste. Good night. Acha viewers ji, please like kije, subscribe kije, share kije, aur jude rahi hai humare saath, aur aapka feedback bhoat valuable hota hai, mein zarur padhti hoon comment even as I'm listening to the speaker, uh, but I must start getting on to the comments that you come up with on the YouTube. So ab mein usko zyada dhyan se dekhna shuru karungi, abhi ke liye. Shubhratri Pranam.